What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Portaway Podcast. As you can see, there's two. Carson A. Merck is in the building in the absence of Ant with two T's. Of course, I am your host, Showtime Sean Porter. And um, purpose for this live today was a few things. Uh, just trying to celebrate my birthday with all the fans out there. Uh, thank you for tuning in and tell a friend to jump on and hang out with us. Uh, beyond that, I got a special guest in the in the in the studio today. I thought I would have more. I'm only da- I'm down to one. No, I'm not mad at it, but no, it I was super excited to have, of course, uh, our guest along with the other two that we were expecting. We're down to one, which is no biggie. But I was like, man, I need to take advantage of this opportunity to have these Olympians come on my podcast while they're in town. And so I really was just pushing to get this show on. We were trying to do Sunday. We always record our shows on Sunday, and studio was unavailable to us until today. So I did it anyway. Uh, two of them knuckleheads fell asleep, and I ain't mad at them. It's a long camp. It's a it's a it's a and long it's, and it's fight week. And it's fight week. Get all the rest you can. Um, and I don't really think you really understand this, but this is a part of the game too, where you want to sleep, but you still got to get out there and do your media and things like that. So. Um, welcome to the Portaway Podcast, Delante Tiger Johnson, Cleveland Cleveland's finest. The next one, yeah. What's up, big dog? That's what's when up? you say oh, something. Oh, I, thought, I thought you were too. <laughs> you no, thought, he, thought he, had more, he had more. No, of an I, don't intro. Got, I don't got nothing. Like I'm not <laughs> good at introducing people at all. What's up, big dog? What's up with it, man? Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, you know it. How you feeling? I feel great, man. You know it's fight week. Um, we head out to New York tomorrow, so yeah, I'm just ready to, you know, shake this a little bit of weight off and weigh in. Yes, sir. You know, and then handle the rest. Yes, sir. Yeah, you on the undercard of uh, Lomachenko's next fight, and um, all of the young guys are on this on this card. Uh, Troy Isley and also Duke Reagan, who were Richard, supposed to be uh, Richard, Richard, Richard Torres. Richard, is that, Richard is that Torres, Abdullah on yeah. it too? Yeah, Abdullah Mason. Um, yeah, two of Cleveland Brady, two of the next uh, Nico thing. Ali. He's on yeah. the card. Um, it's a it's a stacked card. Yeah. I like what I like what Top Rank and ESPN are doing, giving y'all a platform, even though y'all young and y'all careers an opportunity for people to see y'all, get familiar with y'all. I just I dig it, I dig it. I think that is great. Um, and all the young guys. So I I really wanted Troy in here, and I also really wanted Duke in here. None of y'all are really talkers though. <laughs> so I was like I was like, what this gonna look like? I thought that. The three of y'all would make one another comfortable, and it, we would have more fun. You said so. you didn't mind that there weren't all three, but you keep going back. He's like, yeah, you know, it's fine, not all yeah, three. No, it's, yeah, no, if we had all three, though, yeah, man, the show would be crazy. Yeah. So, but anyway, man, we, we got you, and um, you know, the main thing here is we just want to expose you to to our fans, to the Portaway Podcast fans, and you know, I think that we've we've talked about you, we've shown highlights of you. And um, what probably at least three of his fights. Yeah. Would you have five? Five and zero. Oh? Yeah, five. Five yeah. and zero oh with four KOs. Four knockouts. Yeah. yeah, with four and four big knockouts too. Mm-hmm. How's that going for you so far? The, the, um, the pro game. It's going good. Um, in the beginning, you know, it took me a while to, you know, I'm still, well, I'm still getting comfortable. I'm still, you know, um, learning the game and developing more, and um, you know, just getting, just gaining more and more experience. You know. Um, they giving me some good fights. Uh, yeah. as, as each fight go on, it's yeah. better and better opponents. And you know, um, training camps, man, it's just been going good, man. I've been learning a lot, um, and just getting more and more comfortable just being a professional fighter. You're 24. You started boxing when you were seven. Yeah, seven years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seven you years started now. seven. Yeah, and then you start competing when you were eight. Yeah. All that time as an amateur, you went on and you did the Olympic Games just this past 2021. In um in Tokyo, right? Right. Congratulations on uh, everything you. that you did out there. I I thoroughly enjoy commentating that. What's the difference when you say I'm still getting comfortable for you? What's the difference between what's uh uh twenty uh, something? Don't do uh, the math. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't do the math. <laughs> what like you know, fifteen plus years as an amateur fighter, and then you know you got five fights as a pro. What's the what's the separation there? You think? Um, well, in the amateurs, you know, everything is. You gotta do everything in those three three rounds. Yeah. You got you got three rounds, man, to 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 show the judges that you the winner of that fight. Mm-hmm. And the pros is more you have to be more, you know, um it's I feel like it's more 
technical in the more pros. More strategy. More strategy, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to really know what you're doing in a, in a professional fight. You know what I mean? Like, whatever game plan that your corner has for you, you got to execute that game plan, but also be on your P's and Q's. You know what I'm saying? You fight with no headgear. You got eight ounce gloves on. And I feel like, uh, you know, just um, being more uh, picking your shots better. You know, everything, I feel like everything, it's more slowed down more than it is in the amateurs. Yeah. You know, amateurs is more fast you paced. Right from, yeah, right so you, jump. you know, but. Uh, did, uh, did you know about the eight ounce glove? Yeah. I did not. <laughs> I was excited for the eight ounce gloves too. Yeah, I had no clue about the damn eight ounce glove. <laughs> yeah, I was excited. Was there yeah. anything that surprised you at all? I know you mentioned adjusting, but is there anything as you become a pro, whether it's inside the ring or outside, where you're like, Damn, I really didn't expect this, or I didn't think it was like this as a pro. Um, my debut, actually. Um, it was actually people uh, that knew who I was. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was it was people that had like my Olympic posters, and I think it was uh, top rank posters too. Um, and people was asking me to sign them and stuff. So that 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 caught me off guard. I didn't really expect. Yeah. Expect you, you know, de- you debuted when he got. <laughs> well, hold on, wait a bit. Yeah, he debuted on, no, on the say he debuted on, on, on the Crawford on, Porter card. On Crawford Porter, that's yeah. yeah. all you got to say. I, I was mostly excited. I was like, oh man, Tigers, Tigers debuting this week. And I was like, oh, Sean fights too, man. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. A couple of Ohio guys. I had yeah. nothing to do with that, by the way. He called me up and everything. I'm just outside shooting a hoop in my in, in my driveway, and he said, hey man, uh, wanna, I, you know, we have been communicating yeah. and I've been checking on him and. Asking him when he was debuting, he said, "Man, I would love to debut on your car." I was like, "Okay, yeah, cool." Talk you think, to some people. You think you could talk to somebody? I say, "Yeah, I got you." <laughs> <laughs> I'll go like, "Who am I talk to?" You yeah. know, but it ended up happening. I, yeah. I don't know, you know, who really put those pieces to the puzzle together, but it happened for you, and I'm, I'm yeah. glad that you was able to get open up on my car. Man, yeah. like, that, that was my that's manager. Big. My manager really fought. He he fought hard to because I told him I was like because um, it was other cards that was that was around y'all fight date mm-hmm. that uh that they was trying to put me on and i was like man i want to fight with sean i want to fight on sean card you mm-hmm. know what i mean and he 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 was able to get it done man so you know big big shout out to uh you know my manager dave uh mcwaters hey i had a question for you um and I, I hopefully you can answer this for the people what is it about cleveland that make that like in boxing why is boxing in cleveland why is, what's what's so special about cleveland and why do we produce great boxers i feel like um man we always had just that we always had the it factor in cleveland like it's just something about boxing in cleveland man we just always got that it factor like yeah. no matter like the coaches like this is i feel like most most fighters that you know make it out of cleveland this is like just naturally just talented yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying like we just naturally talented, yeah. man. Like just Cleveland fighters, you know. Like, and I feel I feel that way just with the Midwest in general. Like, you yeah. know, because you got you know you got Chicago, you got uh, Detroit, yeah, Detroit, you know, Detroit. what I'm saying then the rest of Ohio, Cincinnati, Toledo, Columbus. It's always always been like we just always had that that natural gift for boxing. I mean, Sean mentioned earlier you you being the next guy, which I think is is definitely <laughs> true. But how cool is it? You got I mean a couple weeks, two weeks now, Montana fights. Raynell's on the card. Uh-huh. Yeah. You got Abdullah Mason fighting on the same card as you. How cool is it to be a part of that next generation that's going to take over for Sean, Mickey Bay? I mean, if, I ain't going to lie. It feels, if, it feels good that, uh, you know, that, um, I mean, it feels good that we got guys like Sean and everybody from his generation and and so on that's, that's watching us, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And they actually uh, – you know they're actually supporting us you know what i mean and i feel like that's you know that's a lot of love right there you know what i mean like even active fighters that's yeah. supporting us you yeah. know what i mean and i feel like that's um that means a lot you know just coming up when you don't have a lot of support a big support system and then you getting you got andre ward you got sean porter you got you know um uh other fighters uh, uh you got Tans crawford that's watching us you got um Tyson Fury watching us you guys it's a lot of fighters that's you know that's really supporting us and that, that actually you know means a lot no doubt. that really tripped me up when I um we were at the Olympic trials in 07 
and um, uh, Evander Holyfield was there. And that I think that might have been the first time for me where it was like a Hall of Famer, uh, a legend was like in the same room while I was doing my thing. And then you were, tra- you were going super hard. I wasn't because I, I didn't know he was there. Oh, OK. Probably would have changed some yeah. things for me had I known he was there. And I still was very oblivious to what I learned actually later on in my career. What I learned was that these legends, these Hall of Famers, even though they're retired, they still have someone to watch. And that's what it really clicked. Things clicked for me when I realized that the ones that I looked up to were looking now looking at me. And I was that that took took me to a whole nother level, knowing that people were looking at me. And I just feel like boxing in Cleveland's always had a light over it. And I'm I, honestly I'm like I'm humbled that I could carry that light until guys like like um Tiger right here and um um Montana's really doing his thing on the, he on another level right mm-hmm. now too and and to see Raynell making a comeback that's that's got to be that's special yeah that is yeah I saw him back in what like June and he said he thought he might want to come back I looked at him and I said yo you can do this you know what I mean so anybody that doesn't know uh um Raynell he was a 2008 Olympian yeah. uh came back all the way through the Olympic trials in the losers bracket to beat the champion twice to represent the Olymp- the, the the Americans uh, in his weight class in, in, in 08. So, that, I mean, that was a big deal in itself. And then he went on to have somewhat of a quiet career and now trying to come back and, you know, uh, relight the flame I think is really cool. And, you know, you get to be at home to see all of it. Yeah. That's – that's um, I was uh, I was at his comeback fight, man. It's just – I haven't seen Reynaud fight. The last time I seen Reynaud fight in person, man, I was a little kid, man. I yeah. watched him – did. You know the golden gloves that was like the last time i seen him fight you know like, you know i came up you know what i'm saying like i don't watch sean do golden gloves remember when they had it we used to have it downtown at mm-hmm. the uh at tower city no mm-hmm. it was at uh what was it at um that mason's hall right yep yeah, yeah. i don't like it's it's crazy man mm-hmm. like um to see him back bent back in the ring and yeah he's actually back in the mix so yeah. and i was talking to sappho uh renardo sappho uh as your head coach um, uh, Sappho has had champion after champion on the amateur level. And now I would say you're probably like his, the, his, the guy that he's really, you know, t- has been able to turn pro and get to another level with as mm-hmm. a professional, but, um, talking to Sappho and we were talking about kind of the lineage of boxing and I wanted to know, I said, Sappho, like, where did you come from? And he told me that his coach came up with Clint Martin. Mm-hmm and Duncan and all those rest of those guys. I know we talking, this ain't y'all language right, right now, but the point of it is there's a lineage in boxing that is in Cleveland that, that's just so far and none of it's watered down. And that's kind of what Sappho and I were talking about, how we how they've been able to really hand everything down. I said, everything that my dad showed me, I'm going to show to another to another fighter. But I'm showing them everything that my dad showed me, but he's showing me everything that Clint Martin showed him, you know. So the lineage has really been able to to move on, and I think that that's really where the success in boxing in Cleveland comes from is the fact that, yeah, there's been great. And you're right, like a lot of us are born with like just this athletic talent that is on another level, kind of that it factor, uh-huh. and then you you culminate that with the fact that these coaches know exactly what they're talking about and the stuff that's just been handed down you know so right. you're definitely a part of the 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 breed you know and it's, right i talking to Sappho the other day i was just like like damn like yeah like i didn't realize like we family you know what yeah. i mean not as much as as, as i learned more than i than i had already knew you know right. i know Sappho my whole life so as some capacity he's, he's family but then to see where his his links in the chain were and they same links as mine i was like damn right. like this is this is this how it's done yeah know? yeah the other side of why we're here is to interact with the fans i say this every time i do a live show we're gonna get to y'all we're gonna get to y'all never <laughs> and we never get to y'all so this one is for y'all um definitely want to uh keep tiger in tune as well so i was gonna say we don't want to keep him we want to keep him too long yeah and, yeah uh, and, and on top of that we don't want to keep him too long either so if you got if you guys got a, maybe a couple questions for tiger and we'll keep you maybe another 10 to 15 minutes uh who you fighting uh this coming weekend um esteban garcia he's um a southpaw from uh california six rounds 
Yeah. First six rounder. No, no, this uh my last six rounder. Oh, oh, damn. <laughs> Wait, any anything looking from your last fight going into the obviously into this one? What's something Sean always talks about? Things you can improve on as, as a young fighter? Is there um, anything you really want to kind of lock in on? Um, pretty much. Um, you know, um, just tightening up on you know my punches. Um, you know, uh, just setting up more traps, working more in the pocket. Um, you know, uh, pretty much just being just setting up combinations and just you know being more busy and set more just using my jab more. Okay, there you go. And then for this fight, you know, I'm fighting a southpaw, so you could, of course I had some um, sparring partners that were southpaw, so we had a, you know, just working on different techniques of, you know, just, um, you know, just fighting the southpaw. Yeah. Is that a big thing for you, fighting the southpaw? Um, I don't. I mean, I mean not really. I kind of like. I feel like in the like in the fight. I'm already working on the end camp, but then like in the fight, like let's say if it's like a awkward southpaw, you know, that I'm not familiar with, I have, a, I, I'm pretty good at adjusting like in the fight. So I feel like um, me just having the knowledge that I already know coming into the fight, it, uh, you know. Have you fought, obviously you haven't as a pro, have you fought a decent amount of southpaws as an amateur? Or you ever fight a southpaw? I fought a lot of southpaws okay. and amateurs. Gotcha. Um, my, uh, in the Olympics, I had a fight uh, to a southpaw oh, back to go. back. So yeah, that's not bad then. Yeah. Uh, C. Dubair, he asked where you can watch the fight. Uh, Tiger's fight is going to be on the ESPN, ESPN Plus app. Uh, fights all night are on the ESPN Plus. Oh yeah, app. yeah, we got fights all night. Yeah, you that that's gonna be a card. I mean, we mentioned earlier, everyone that's on that, you just t- tune in whenever it starts. Yeah, and you're gonna be watching a lot of Olympians, a lot of yeah. young stars. How cool is that? I know we mentioned you being on the next wave of, of Cleveland fighters, like with Abdullah and Montana. How does it feel to kind of be coming up with these guys, like all your Olympic teammates? Keyshawn, mm-hmm. I know Bruce Carrington wasn't an official Olympian, but like Bruce, Duke, Troy. How cool is that for you he guys? He said he kicked your ass, camaraderie. Too. Who did? <laughs> yeah. Who did? Shushu did? Man, yeah. we, yeah. man. <laughs> but no, it was, a, it was a good fight. Me and him fought. I, it was my first elite nationals. I was, I was coming from youth. And um, we was really actually meant to meet in the finals, but I guess, you know, they messed up on the brackets or whatever, and they put us on the same side. But we fought in the semis, man, and, like, we had the whole building going crazy. Like, the whole building was at our ring. And that wasn't was, nothing but speed and, yeah. and just back and forth, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a good fight, man. Like, he had his whole – he had the whole East Coast yeah. booing me. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was a crazy fight. But um, – but yeah, man, it feels good, man, that I get to fight with my, you know, my Olympic teammates and, you know, uh, fight with, you know, with Abdullah. And um, it feels good because um, it's something that we always talked about. Like, yeah. for my first year on the team, being with Troy and Duke and, you know, Keyshawn, we always talked about being on each other's cars or just being at each other's fights and the pros and still doing our thing. And now it's actually happening. Does it help as far as? Sean, you could probably weigh in on this as well, where I'm retired. It, well, no, it's one thing for, like, Sean to be like, hey, you know, you can do this, this, and this, but is it nice to have people that are coming up, same amount of fights, and Troy and Duke, I think, have seven fights, but yeah. is it nice for they can point something out to you and you can point something out to them as you're both, as you're all kind of coming up together? Yeah, we always, like, we always, like, um, helping each other out some kind of way. Like, if I see, like, um, you know, for, for example, if I see Troy or Duke or, Keyshawn or whatever, um, I'm watching they fight and it's something that I feel like they could have did better than, you know, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to be like, okay, Key, you could have did this and that or, you know, dude, you could have used your jab a little, you know what I'm saying, or, you know, just little stuff like that. And whenever they see me doing something, they'll call me and be like, yo, like, you looked good, but da 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 stuff, so. We always helping each other out some kind of way. You got history, so it's not yeah. it's not ever a, a disrespectful Yeah, thing. it's just, it's always genuine. Yeah. Question for you from Kevin. He wants to know what your future goals are and fights you want to have. Um, my 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 future goals. Um, I just want to um get the, just just keep proving that um 
you know, that I'm a um, a top professional fighter. You know, just keep proving to everybody that, um, you know, I belong with the with with the in the same conversation with the with the top fighters in my weight class. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and it's been it's I've been doing good. You know, at my debut, I had to fight somebody that was four and one. You know, and each fight it was it was just a a step up each fight, you know. Um, yeah. Like the guy I'm fighting this Saturday is 15 and one with eight knockouts. You know what I mean? So they constantly, you know, stepping me up each fight, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm showing that, you know, that I'm developing as each fight go on, and I'm I'm just keep proving myself, and you know, I just want to, you know, um, do something big for Cleveland. You know. Yeah. I'm all for that. You feel good at 140? Yeah. I haven't I haven't fought at 140 yet, but you know this fight is gonna be at 143. So okay. working just, your way down. Yeah, working my way down. Gotcha. Yeah. You did the the Olympics at 47. 52. 50. Oh, at 52. Yeah. Okay. You working your way down. Sweet. Love that. You fought at 143 once. Uh, yeah. 44. Was they 44? actually brought 147 back. 45? Dude, that's the crazy part. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, they yeah. brought it. Like, all the weight class they took out for us, they brought it back right afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dang, that's crazy. They yeah. brought 156, 47. Uh, real quick, the amateur boxing champions that, I, that I've been creating and have started, got great news for everybody out there. We got on the line with Apple today, and we are now certified Apple developers. So now we, we officially will have our app. My guys are texting me right now, getting the information from me. So we'll have the app created like in a matter of a week, if not less. I'm just super, super hyped. I was texting you this morning. You was like, yo, I don't know what you own right yeah, now. Yeah, he, he was on another level. <laughs> but I was just super, super hyped. You know, when, when you're working on business and business starts to move the way you want it to, you, you get excited, especially where, you know, now that, th that I put all my time and energy into certain things, when you start to see them working out, it just, it, I was hyped. I was a on another a level. AB, about business. I was on another level. So, uh, producer, shout out to DDA, um, our road producer. We were in Colorado Springs working with, with the amateurs, interviewing all those guys. And he said, yo, I was thinking amateurboxingchampions.com is a little long. I grabbed abchamps.com. What do you think about using that instead? So, that's kind of the official announcement to you all right now. Um, if you've been waiting on amateurboxingchampions.com, it's uh, we are in the process of editing some videos right now to get them up on the on the website. We already have a lot of fighters already profiled on the website. We're gonna clean it all up, and the app will be coming soon. Um, and then we're gonna rebrand it to abchamps.com. Much simpler, much quicker, uh, easier to get to all those things. But uh, if you guys have been watching, paying attention to the Portaway podcast, we've had Bruce Carrington on a number of times. We've talked about him. We've shown highlights of him. And he fought Tiger Johnson right across from me. Uh, back in the day, I fought Daniel Jacobs. Uh, back in the day, I fought Demetrius Andre. Um, I'm trying to think of some other like big names that you guys would know so that you understand I mean, guys, that. Like, didn't, I think Frank Martin, didn't he fight like Virgil Ortiz? Yeah. I like think, there's, yeah. There, there, you can connect every dot. Yeah. Like when it comes to Amber A Ball. lot of, um, uh, Terrence Crawford fought, uh, Danny Garcia back, back in the day in the Olympic trials, you know? So the point of me saying all that is I'm, I'm connecting some dots and I'm trying to make it so that you guys can see semifinals, finals fights. That one happened to be like y'all were the first night you and Shushu. No, it was a that was the semis. That was oh y'all were the semis. Yeah, it was the semis. So yes, yeah, so y'all would have had an opportunity to see two Olympians go at it against one another. You know, so that's what I'm trying to create with this amateur boxing champions is a way for people to see what's coming much sooner than when y'all are ten to know as pros. Now y'all have multiple platforms and outlets to be seen and and talk your stuff and get people to see who you are, but. Tell me what you just kind of based on what I just said, what do you think about the amateur boxing champions that I've created that I'm starting for, you know, to help highlight what's going on in the amateur programs? Man, that's 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 big, man. Like that's that's real big. Like you giving the you giving um you giving the amateur uh the amateur scene a chance to be seen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's that's real big, man, because you got a lot of you got a lot of cause you know, in amateur boxing, it's it's biased. You know what I mean? You got 
you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's good fighters everywhere, you know what I mean? But you might just have this this three three amateur fighters that only gets the recognition just off of just, you know, they just be like that sometimes. Name situation. Yeah, just names, yeah. So so by uh, by you having the the um the website yeah. with the highlights and everything like yeah. that, that gives everybody a chance to show the world like, you know, yeah. they, they skills and everything. So that's big right there. We went to Colorado Springs, we interviewed I think like ten or eleven different uh other fighters. Yeah uh contacted all of them we got them sending us fights we're gonna cut up their fights and create highlight reels for them of course gonna have the the, the in-depth interviews of them so people can see their stories see them and get connected to them by the 2024 games i want people tuning in especially boxing fans tuning in to see who my american fighter is and how far are they gonna go and just really rooting for y'all opposed to seeing that Y'all made it to the semis. All right, cool. Yeah. Now, now you're really on TV, and I don't gotta look for you. Mm-hmm. Now, let me watch. You know. So I'm trying to. I'm working on some things, and we should be down in Texas uh, for the next national tournament, uh, broadcasting the semis and the finals on, on the on the platform live as well. So yeah, that's that's big. Yeah, that's what I said. I said um, NBA, basketball, football, every every sport out there has it except for boxing, right. where you see the young players that are coming up. You see the young athletes much sooner than when they become professionals right you're hip to them you know who they are you 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 are watching tv waiting on them to get drafted right you know what i mean yeah. so you no know, there's no drafting in boxing but a lot the same once you turn pro you're like oh man my man's turned pro he's fighting on the espn plus app make sure you check him out and that's what we're trying to do for you right now there was a draft top rank had like every <laughs> first round pick of all time that last one run through all of those um, real quick, uh, any closing thoughts from you, Tiger Johnson, before you get up out of here? We do. We didn't want to keep you too long. We wanted uh, you to get get out of here and get your rest and all. Get back to your workout and all that kind of stuff too. Pretty much just, um, you know, um, just a big shout out to you know everybody that supported me. You know, a huge shout out to you guys uh, for having me on the show and also supporting me. Um, I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling ready, man, for this. I'm excited to fight this Saturday because this is my first time fighting in New York. Oh, so. There you go. I just want to show. I I want to give a chance to really, you know, put on a good show in front of you know thousands of fans that's going to be in New York. So that's going to be man, real exciting and you know just basically just putting on for Cleveland. You know, uh, I just want to play. You know, do my part to put on for the city. You know, uh, you know Sean and you know you know Terrell Gouche and Mickey Bay. Like you know they did they part. They paved the way for, you know, guys like me and Abdullah and Montana. So I just want to, you know, play my part keep it and just keep it going for Cleveland. So Absolutely. that's that's cool. That's cool. Y'all, and y'all can see that he's really humble. But I want you to tell everybody why they should watch your box. <laughs> tell people why they should. If you, Sell me. I need to know why I should watch you fight. Um, You're a good-looking pretty, dude, but that ain't, that ain't enough. <laughs> ain't enough. Pretty, pretty much, you know, um. Even even since an amateur, man, I always been, I always been a, an exciting fighter. You know what I mean? Guy. I got all the tools. You know what I mean? And I'm I can punch. I'm fast. You know, good movement, um, reflexes. You know, I got everything I, I need to do to win. You know what I'm saying? If I gotta put the pressure on somebody, if my corner say walk him down, then that's what I I'm gonna do. Got if no, if no they boy. say if they say I, you know box him, I'm gonna do that. You know what I mean? And while I'm doing it, I'm exciting. I'm not just in there, you know, just going with the motions or, you know, just I'm in there, man. I'm I'm having fun. Yeah. Like I, I'm 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 in the ring having fun, man. Don't call that, man. Tell them Cleveland in the ring. Yeah, <laughs> Tell you know them that's saying? why you watch, cause Cleveland yeah. in the ring and that's how we do it. Right. That's what's up. I'm excited to see you, man. Uh looking forward to the fight. And uh as always, let me know what's going on. I'm always there to support you, big dog. Appreciate it, man. Yes, Appreciate sir. it. Always. Yeah. <laughs> we usually get a picture, but is that is that now nah, we don't need a picture. I'll see you later, right? Yeah. I'll be talking to you. Right, no, we we're gonna keep going. Yep. Yeah. Oh, a nice little fade out. You, you didn't I see saw that. Oh, you I saw, saw it. it over there. <laughs> we both got TV. I didn't even notice. Yeah. <laughs> it's over here. You want nice to, little fade uh, out. 
I don't know what the questions are looking like. But uh, somebody wanna... did ask what weight class he's fighting at. He's fighting at 152 right now, but he's working no, his he's way down. No, he's fighting at 143. Well, I mean, yeah, his last fight was at 43, but if you're over one... How'd you oh, get to 52? Yeah, he fought at 52 I... in the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're over 140, yeah. then you're fighting at 47, 47. technically. Yeah, yeah. So, but technically, he will he's eventually be at 40. 140 is where yeah, he which will is a good, be. That's a, good, that's a good weight to go for. Yeah. What is that? Welterweight. No, no that's junior uh, welterweight. You fought it. You fought at welterweight, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what the question's are like, but we can, if you want to run through some fights coming up this weekend and then go there. Absolutely. Um, so I think the first one we can touch on briefly. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know how Jake Paul Anderson Silva looks. Huh? I don't know how that goes. Oh, you don't know how that goes? No. I hate when I know things and it's like... I mean, do you, you know something okay, so you're not allowed I, to share? I mean, we you don't need to get in trouble on on on, on my behalf on on asking you. I think I think I think uh, Anderson Silva is going to win this boxing. Match. Okay, let's keep let's keep it at that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm down for it. Yeah, I think Anderson Silva is going to win this boxing match. Yeah, Anderson Silva. I just can't. Somebody somebody said like I can't see Silva getting knocked out. I can't either. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think I'll lean towards Silva as well. Yeah. But, um Yeah. <laughs> it's it's an interesting matchup though. Yeah. Maybe probably the most interesting to me so far of his fight. Of his fight. Not huh? that any of them like really? especially interest interest yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I I was kinda like, it is what it is. Yeah. Do whatever. But yeah. yeah. What's what is he? Is he five and oh, four and oh? Gotta be he'd be yeah, five and oh probably. Five and oh, maybe. Yeah. That's gonna be interesting. That's but, gonna that's in Phoenix, right? Yeah, it's out, out in Phoenix. Showtime. Showtime pay per view. Showtime pay per view. Yeah, yeah. Anderson Silva was, he was that guy. Yeah. In UFC like, you and I, neither of us are big UFC sure. fans to follow, but but we know there's about him. fighters that like you know about like it was like when we were younger, it was like Chuck Liddell. Yeah. And then it was like Anderson Silva. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. See what happens. It'd be interesting. I got um, a shout out Tito Ortiz. Tito Ortiz. Fair yeah, enough. He was he was another name yeah. that you just knew. I mean Bones Jones obviously. Shamrock. More recent times. Rampage yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Anderson Silva was like he was the guy for a minute. But see him speak, Anderson Silva. Yeah, yeah, super, super like soft spoken, soft spoken dude. Yeah, yeah. But in the in the octagon, yeah, I just then, don't think it's the same. Yeah, and he's, so I think he's I think older. you you gotta you gotta have to Jake if Jake goes after him, and 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 ruffles his feathers, then then he comes to life, you yeah. know. So yeah, that's but, what I hope happens. Yeah, not a ton on that one though, and then. Um, now rooting against Jake Paul. I, I don't care. I a lot of people are like rooting against him. And yeah, which, we're ready for this to be over. Which with makes and all for that, you know, entertain entertainment. I guess you either hate him or love him. Do you even know what the undercard is like? I don't think there's a ton of actual like notable fighters on the undercard. Yeah, um, Ashton Silv, Le'Veon Bell fights. Oh yeah, Le'Veon's in the coma. Uh, no, he's on. Uh, he's the he, coma. Maybe. Yeah. Jeremiah Milton fights. I know he's an actual boxer that I'm familiar with. <laughs> um, no disrespect to any of these guys. I know there's also they mixed in some local fighters, which is cool. Um, but yeah, nothing too noteworthy. And then there is a DAZN card in San Diego. Alexis Rocha is back in the co-main, but then Jojo Diaz and William Zapata. That's actually a pretty interesting fight. So William Zapata was so highly regarded mm -hmm. as a prospect. Mm-hmm. And then he's had some mm -hmm. really, really interesting fights. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we watched his maybe his second to last fight. Yeah, where he like just dropped just getting, the guy, yeah. but then he got dropped, getting hit, and then yeah, he fell, and yeah. then I think he got a stoppage. But uh, Jojo Diaz is a very good fighter. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he's the elite, elite, elite. But I think he's still a got a, good a lot left in the tank, though. I could yeah. be wrong, but I yeah. think that JoJo has still has a lot left in the tank. Yeah, and this is at this is at 35. Yeah, which JoJo, as we know, came up from uh, mm -hmm. featherweight, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting fight. I'm Zapata's got to be on his p's and q's because JoJo's a yeah, he's a skilled tactical fighter, and if anything, he's gonna keep coming forward. I would say one step behind where he. Once yeah. was, which isn't a which isn't that's really not yeah. bad at the end of the day, you know what I mean? So, is it Jojo Gia's that your dad has like 
holds he, in like an extremely he, high regard. I, I don't know about now, but yeah, like back like in the coming, day, I yeah, your dad mentioned, yeah, he's yeah, 12, like, 2012 Olympian, and yeah. my dad was like, he's the guy. Yeah. He's like, he said, hey, yeah, we we already we've already determined that uh, Aerosmith Jr. is going to be the guy. Yeah, but the guy that nobody's really talking about is going to be the guy JoJo, is yeah. JoJo, and yeah. JoJo had a has had a uh, has had a really good career. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I think. Zapata's not going to be in a boring fight. I don't remember Jojo Diaz really being in a boring fight. He was certainly in an awkward fight against Javier Fortuna. But, yeah, um, yeah, that should be an interesting one. Then, like I said, Rocha's on the undercard. Um, and then Somebody going... just said, what up, Mitch? I think they're talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> the real, real husbands of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but the uh, – and then going to New York, where Tiger and, and the rest of the Olympian will be fighting. Um, main event – I don't, I don't foresee a lot of trouble for Vasily Lomachenko. Um, I mean, so I, I, we talked about this before, and I'm curious if you've considered it all. So he's sparred with Jermaine Ortiz before. Okay. My thought is it can work, obviously, against you and for you, mm-hmm. but I think it actually might help Ortiz maybe a little bit more than it helps Lomachenko because – Lomachenko has such a unique style yeah. that at least you've been in there with a version of it. Yeah. Obviously, it's not Lomachenko ratcheted up to 10 with pivots and everything like that. Right. But at least you've seen him right. in the ring. Right. I don't know if that's right or wrong. Well, some guys are really are that far along that they don't have to really operate yeah. to protect themselves, operate to hurt you and, and box and things like that. And then a lot of guys just use sparring as a way to kind of sweat. Yeah. You know, some guys like like... My dad and I, we were in camp, and we were telling guys, like, hey, come ready to hurt yeah. <laughs> because Sean is going 75 to 80%. Yeah. And, you know, and then there's moments where you go up to 90, you know, but I, we, we, that's how we train. A lot of people don't train like that, you know, so it's, it really is hard to say, like, you've seen that style, but have you seen it with that speed? Have you yeah. seen it with that, that level of intensity that he, he performs with on fight night, you know? And, a lot of times guys aren't ready for it. the other side of that is if you've tasted it before and you knew you had some trouble with it. Yeah. And You're you like, know uh-oh. that and you could tell, like, hey, this wasn't the same guy that, that fought yeah. on Saturday night. You you are definitely thinking about what's gonna happen. And and is it kind of similar? I know after uh and Jermaine Ortiz obviously coming off a good win against Jamel Herring, but um when we talked about after Ugas fought Pacquiao, you made a point to say like these guys have like Pacquiao or Ugas has watched Pacquiao forever. Yeah. So at least to some level you visualize it. Yeah. Is that also something, whether you've sparred with him or not, he's thought Slomachenko. Oh, like yeah. I'm clearly in Absolutely. that mindset. Especially after, after being sparring, in the ring. You with, did with Pacquiao. Yeah, the, the the sparring for a lot of guys is just kind of well, let me give you the work that you want because you needed me to come in and yep. give you work, but then also let me test myself. Let me see where I'm at as well. You know, so Definitely, when you get a moment to spar with a great fighter, no matter how uh, how close you are to fighting that guy, how close you are to age, whatever the case may be, you, there's still a, a, a level of excitement because you get an experience, yeah. you know. So, I'm I am I, I'm curious to see if that experience carries Jermaine or if it kind of like yeah. pulls him back. I'm I'm just always fond of seeing Lomachenko fight. But, yeah, I know you are. Um, so that that'll be interesting. I, and then kind of going off of that, and then we can dive into some other stuff, but. It's interesting, just the narrative of, so Bob Arum said his plan or his his goal is to make Lomachenko and Haney after this. Mm. I mentioned, I think, last week when, when I, where I was on, I don't, Haney hasn't, he doesn't owe Lomachenko that. No. Like, and there's a narrative kind of like he does. Like, oh, really? Oh, well, Lomachenko, <laughs> he, and I'm like, and then there's this whole thing where Lomachenko petition to be a franchise champion and Haney was his mandatory and then Haney was the champ as well as we all knew where there was back and forth that but he doesn't like oh Lomachenko a fight uh-uh. I think Haney is all about it yeah and I think Haney has proven more than maybe any other young fighter he's he's down for the action went overseas twice to fight Cambosas when he yeah. didn't have to yeah signed with top rank when he didn't have to yeah he did it to do it so I don't yeah. There, I don't get. I've I've never had the impression that Devin Haney would duck any fight. Yeah, and I don't see why Lomachenko would be any different. Uh, I I know that uh the Haney family they're all about greatness. Yeah. So um, but they but they they all they are also very business savvy as well, and yeah. I think that that's the thing that really gets people in this game is when you 
the dollars just sometimes don't make sense. You're yeah. like, well, this makes all the sense in the world, but then how is this not? How is this fight not happening? Yeah. You know? I know we'll get to Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence yeah. and eventually, y'all. Yeah. Hula out. Um, but kind of the same thing in that respect where it, it makes so much sense. Yeah. And you're just like, whoa, how are you? What? What? And it's like, yeah, but, you know, behind closed doors, yeah. something that we saw didn't make sense. And so. and that also for for that fight specifically, that one just seemed, if that fight does come to fruition. That's a great fight. It's, a, it's an amazing oh, fight, a fight. And it's for Devin. It's a great fight for Legacy. Yeah. Fighting Lomachenko. Yeah. Who's regard as this guy yeah and also i i don't see why that wouldn't be financially beneficial as well sure sure so sure, sure. i yeah. think that's one of those situations where it probably works out both ways sure. where it's a legacy fight and a financial yeah uh windfall if you will yeah but it'd be a great fight but yeah i assume lomachenko will do what he does a yeah lot of, a lot of pivots a lot of a lot of, a lot of doing his thing in there but yeah um do we want to go do, is there any questions that intrigue you off the jump street uh, somebody go? said that um Somebody said that uh, that Ortiz can move with Loma. How you feel about that? <laughs> Not sure about he can move with Loma, uh -huh. but he can move. Uh, Ortiz, I was impressed. And I know Jamel, we talked about it like at the time, and then Jamel even talked about it that he just didn't, Jamel wasn't really himself. Not uh -huh. to discredit Ortiz, but um, he looked good in that fight. I'm not sure if he can move with Lomachenko. I think they're, you know, who, you know how about this? I've told you before. In sports and music and anything, when somebody that I highly respect tips their cap to somebody I also respect, it, it just kind of it validates you a little bit. Uh -huh. So there's like a video, a classic. Anyone on YouTube that's a hip hop fan, go watch Most Def talk about MF Doom. He oh, like yeah. he can't even believe it. He's yeah, reciting yeah, yeah, yeah. lyrics. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's unbelievable. Yeah. So they asked. I, I can't. I apologize. I can't think of the the outlet that it was. But they were talking to Lomachenko and they mentioned Bam Rodriguez. Ah. And he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Because that's a, been a comparison uh -huh. footwork and everything. Uh -huh. so that's one of the only guys I think of footwork-wise that I think could really tangle with Lomachenko. Obviously, they won't fight. But, yeah. Um, I, I'm going to give this, this name a shot. I think it yeah. says Adamantium uh, Unloaded. He says Stanionis is fighting Spence December 17th at Cowboy Stadium. Have you seen that? I haven't seen December 17th. Stanionis is the name that I've heard uh -huh. most linked like, to yeah, He's yeah. also a mandatory. Yeah. And yeah. he was the one that stepped aside for him to fight Ugas. Yeah. He's the IBF mandatory. IBF mandatory. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess we might as well just dive in with that. Um, it's it's frustrating. <laughs> Somebody said, come on, Spence, and Spence versus Crawford talk. Yeah, so it, it's frustrating as a boxing fan. And it's, it's especially frustrating as there's been – whether it's reports or breadcrumbs of, you know, this date might happen. They've agreed to this. They haven't agreed to that. There's only, there's, Errol has all the belts except for one. Yeah. And the other one is Terrence Crawford has. So it's, it's frustrating when everything, it's like if you were watching a TV show and everything built up to something and then all of a sudden the finale like got canceled yeah. or went completely left and you yeah. were like, what, what the heck? What, yeah. What's going on here? It's kind of like that. Yeah. We just, we just knew they were going to fight. Yeah. And now they're not. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have overall kind of a general reaction to the. It it's just, just not it's happen. like, it's just what I know. Yeah. And I know that. Like Terrence is. Terrence has always like he, you guys, whatever you see on YouTube or you see in a, in a fight with Terrence, that's just flat out who he is. You know, we, you, you obviously experienced Terrence through the course of a weekend. You, you know exactly how he is. He's just very, very stern, very, um, stubborn, very stubborn, like extremely stubborn. Like I, I'd put it, I, I'd bet that he's the most stubborn person in I the mean, world. I mean, we threw a football in the street for 45 minutes because yeah. he wanted to prove that he could throw at 60 yards. So when it comes to this fight, I don't know, I don't know the business side of it and I have not, talk to Terrence and I have not talked to Arrow. I let them guys do what they got to do. But I, what I, what I, what my feeling is that Terrence has said, I need A, B, C, and D and we can get it on. And one of those alphabets is not being met. Yeah. And you, you just, you're looking at the most stubborn guy in boxing. Yeah. Probably one of the most stubborn guys in sports. Yeah. And if he's not getting what he feels he deserves, what he wants, then he's saying, I'm going to go a different direction, you know? So 
I, I'm just, I, I was different. And everybody's like, well, you didn't duck anybody. And you fought, you fought everybody. And you didn't, you never fought about the money. And it was never a problem. Why is it such a problem for other fighters? Other fighters didn't conduct their business the way that I was conducting my business. As you see now, I'm 35 years old. I just turned 35. Yeah. And I'm, I'm well into maybe three or four other like straight up businesses. Like I'm working very hard. Boxing was not the only thing on my mind, was not the only thing that I wanted to do. No offense to anybody else, but these other guys are they're they're squeezing those lemons. They're getting yeah. everything that they can get out of every fight. And and it's no knock. You have to respect them at some capacity for understanding what they want, what they deserve, what they feel they need. There's a lot of times where you see fighters not fight who you expect them to fight. But the money is still what they need it to be, you right. know. So I don't know, man. At the end of the day, I, I, I encourage everybody not to give up on boxing, not to give up on the business of boxing, to just understand that both of these fighters doing what they feel is best. And if it wasn't right right now, I do expect that eventually it does get right. And I'm going to go on record for saying I think it gets right at 154. Okay. And I like to fight for both guys at 154. I was talking to somebody just the other day and they said they didn't like the fight at 154 because they think that Terrence will be too small. And he said, "Yo, he's coming up from 130." Like, yes. so what? Like yeah. he he was he was he was a young man at 130. He's a grown man now at yeah. 40 at 47 and possibly 54 if yeah. it happens. I just when it happens. Yeah, there you go. I like that. <laughs> I just it's it's frustrating. I I don't know if maybe in my mind I I've, I've I just have, am just kind of built to be let down. So I didn't even like, I I wasn't maybe as invested as other people. I was just kind of like, I don't think. It, like, I 100%. It happens, it happens, I saw but, the date and I was like, oh, yeah, okay. But I was like, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, in my opinion, I, I. You know, I have people. Hey, I had somebody call me, told me that they bought plane tickets. I A lot of people did. I said, yeah. I said, yo, you got your insurance on that plane ticket, right? Yeah. I said, I don't mean to speak any ill. Yeah. And I don't mean to be negative, but. Yeah. Make sure you get your lights, your flight. hotels, yeah, like people yeah. make it happen. But I, I love to see that people are so excited about it. Yeah. But you just have to understand that, like, until you see both guys in a press conference. Right. That's when you know it's real. I know? just, Errol Spence. So keep that in mind, y'all. You yeah. see a press conference. Errol Spence, to me, I've, I I think he's the best welterweight on the planet. I told Darren Scarper well, that. I'm mad at in you. A, in a lengthy conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Extremely lengthy. I, I don't. Errol Spence is maybe, he's maybe the guy I trust the most in boxing. Yeah. He's the truth. T t and he's a little and, bit more like me in the yeah. sense that he's like, you tell me what it is and, yeah. and we get and, it going. And that's you know? not, and by me saying that is not to discredit Terrence. I have sure, a lot of sure, love sure, for sure. Terrence. I sure. enjoy the time we, we hang out with Terrence. But yeah. Errol, had, everything that Errol said he's going to do, yeah. every single thing has happened. Yeah, he can't knock that. He obviously was Kel's mandatory. He goes over, gets the IBF, and he was like, hey, you line him up, yeah. you're knocking him down, yeah. and he's collected all of these belts. He's My taken, dad said he was like that when he was yeah. when he was in the game. He's too. taken every, so, yeah. so when it comes to if somebody's just like, "Hey, who do you believe more?" Yeah. I just believe Errol Spence more. <laughs> yeah, and Errol Spence doesn't have a random fight out of nowhere that got announced. That's Terence Crawford. Yeah. So if you have another fight, clearly, yeah, you weren't fight you weren't fighting that guy. Yeah. So I and I, I we don't even need to talk about that fight yet. I'm sure you guys will dive into it, but and and Avenisian. I, I hope Terrence is getting the money that they're rumoring that he's getting. The fight doesn't interest me. Sorry. Is what it is. Hey, real quick about that, though. This is a question for you. Yeah. Uh, is it so bad for him not to have all of his eggs in one basket? Uh, for Terrence Crawford? Yeah. If you don't, in that case, not having all of his eggs in one basket, to me, gives off the impression that you weren't fully invested to make that fight happen. Well, think about it like this. Um if I'm going to do business with somebody that I've never done business before, I should I would go in protecting myself. Yeah, have a backup plan, have a have a a, a a plan B, so to speak. Again, you know, I just I feel like he Terrence is prepared to do now what he's never been able to do, which is have control of his career. Yeah, and I think that it's somewhat admirable in that respect that. Him wanting to control his career is, hey, if I'm not getting what I need over here, I'm going over here and I'm getting it over here. Again, very um, stubborn of him. Yeah. Very um, uh, all of that uh, of him to to not 
try to work this out and so on and so forth. And again, yeah, we don't really know what capacity the, the, the conversations and all that got into, but yeah. I just, at the end of the day, I don't know people are like, yo, what the hell is this? Yeah. I thought you were working on Errol Spence and it's like, well, I'm trying to be patient. They're not working with me. So I'm going over here to get and my then bag. It's, and then, I mean, there's all the classic saying, which maybe one of the most accurate statements ever is there's three sides of every story. Sure. And there's the truth. Sure. There's, there's this, this, and the truth. Sure. Funny enough, Errol Spence is the truth. But Errol's like, yeah, he was stalling, this, this, and this. Bud's like, yeah, he wasn't even around for the negotiations. <laughs> so clearly both of those things can't be true. Yeah. But it, it, it's a mess. Well, um, I mean, uh, 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 NFL running back does not negotiate their deals. Yeah. The agent negotiates the deal. Right. You call me, you tell me what it is. Nah, I can't do that. We want more. Yeah. And, you know, so... Yeah, no, this is not the NFL, and no business is done the exact same way, but now Terrence is handling his own career. Yeah. And he has to, un what Terrence has to understand, and I'll speak directly to you, Terrence, what you have to understand is people are only going to respect you for what you do. If you're a fighter, people are going to respect you for being a fighter. People don't know you for being a businessman. So you put people in place that they respect to work that business out for you yeah. because people are just not going to, be receptive to you and do things with you the way you expect them or want them to do it. The respect level is not there. You yeah. know, I think for me, like I, I made a smooth transition into commentary and doing boxing analytical work. But if I just jumped on at the, at the drop of a dime on what, uh, Croft on, uh, on Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder people, I'm sure would be looking at this, like, uh, let's see what he's got. Yeah. You know, I had enough put into the bank that now People understand that I can do certain things, yeah. you know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it, it, I think it got kind of messy, and I think that, um, yeah, uh, I don't I, know. I hope they figure it out. Yeah. I do. Um, I'm not holding my breath. I don't. I mean, there's something that uh, Arrow's like, yo, I'm going to 154. I'm not wasting my time with this. I, I probably would. Yeah. You have the majority <laughs> of the belts. Like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah. And, and Arrow all along, and. Obviously, and he did. He tweeted. He's like, yeah, it's tough making 47. He's a big guy. He's been 47 for his whole career, Yeah, which was another part of the debate that I had with Bud. <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just something where Bud has multiple times said, I don't need Errol Spence. I'm, I'm this, it, which he is. Yeah, He has a great resume. He's a great fighter. I, think that's I told him one. he's a great father. He's a great basketball needs. player. He's just not the best at 147. But the, I think that's the one he needs. And, and I think Errol – has consistently said, no, he's the guy I want to fight. But now Errol's probably like, eh, tough yeah. break. Didn't yeah. happen. Like, yeah. kind of is what it is. But, yeah, yeah I don't know. It, it's exhausting. And then Errol fans are going crazy after Bud. I know certain fans of Bud are like, I'm done with him. I'm frustrated because he's been, to be fair, top rank had him in a spot where sure. it was tough to make big fights. So you see this list of Errol Spence's fights at 147. Yeah. And Bud doesn't have those res yeah. fights on his resume. Yeah. But, it's like is what it is. Kind of like self sabotage in, in some, yeah. some respect. Because it's like, okay, this guy keeps having big fights, and now we want you in a big fight with him. Yeah. And you didn't make it happen. Yeah. Like now you're fighting Avenician, who, yeah. again, he's an okay fighter. Yeah. I'm not going to disrespect any fighter, but sure. I mean, it's not the caliber you want. Like, then, yeah. It's not the caliber. And Virgil Ortiz, if you were just going to take a random off fight that's yeah. not Earl Spence, Virgil Ortiz is right there waiting for you. Yeah. WBO mandatory. But. What do you uh, – and then one thing to touch on last week, because I'm a big fan of this guy. I know I'm a big fan of yours, Landy Lara, but Mauricio Lara, Bronco Lara, <laughs> that is my guy. First off, Kick he is hit. all action. Yeah. He went over there and, and kicked the shit out of Josh Warrington once. Yeah. He was going to do it again. <laughs> and when we saw him fight in San Diego before yeah. Chocolatito fights, yeah. I was like, holy – yeah, it was, it was an experience in yeah. person. Yeah. He gets the knockout <laughs> win on Saturday. And they're they're interviewing him afterwards. He said he wants to fight Warrington again. He said he wants to retire him. Ooh. I'm like, Phew. so you like when you hear that retirement talk? I just I that matchup just it just blew up so perfectly. Do you think somebody says I want to retire you? The other guy doesn't retire on purpose. Just <laughs> just he fights another yeah, random person. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> but that it just worked out so perfectly. They they signed for Warrington to fight Lara. He's just this. He's an undefeated. He's a hard hitting Mexican fighter that he. And he smoked him. Yeah. And he was going to do it again. And then they it were actually going to fight. And exciting. He was going to fight Lee Wood. And he was going to smoke Lee Wood's boots too. <laughs> but Lee Wood got hurt. So they had to postpone that fight. So we'll see what Lara 
I would love for him to fight Wood. I would love for him to fight Warrington. And he smokes both of them. Big Mauricio Lara fan. And your guy, uh, uh, Tashiro. Angel Fierro got a win oh, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah watch in, this In the co Shout watch out to fight. him. Uh, Any good shout questions? Out, shout out to Gail. He said, Bronco, yes. I'm Bronco, this. Hey, Bronco. Bronco <laughs> he said is, he's, a mystery, he's a mystery Mexican who goes over to the UK and it's scorched earth. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, he... <laughs> I, I was actually like, even having watched those fights, and, and to be fair, I was probably in a similar boat. I wasn't too familiar with him before he fought Warrington. Uh-huh. And then when we saw him in person in San Diego, I was like, Mystery Mexican. I was like, my God. I was, the same thing. I, I was, was talking like, shots to my guy J Row, but we're, we're sitting there and I was like, whoa, yeah. whoa. Like, yeah. End of these rounds is all action. He, he's all action, man. Combinations, punching power. He's a great fighter. What else we got? Gerard Baker, I love you, Sean. Keep up the good work. Thank you. There you go. Uh, Crawford ain't the best because of his resume. He's the best because of his skills. Kobe Camp. I'm mad at that. If EJ had got a belt, left his promoter, and came to top rank, and it still hadn't happened in 11 months, y'all be blaming Bob. I like to blame Bob Arum. That's, that's, <laughs> uh, that's a fair. That's a fair shout. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Dewberry said, uh, "Do you believe he was offered a no guarantee?" Because I don't. I I don't know. That I think a, I think the the language that's in the um contracts they vary. I yeah. think that you guys expect every contract to look and sound the same, but it, it they don't. Well, and um, a lot of a lot of that is I'm not gonna slander him excessively. Mike Coppinger was the one that was reporting a lot of these things, so it went from a couple months ago. He has this whole article. They have agreed to terms. It's this, this, and this. And then he said, but technically they haven't signed. And so I, I think we actually talked about it at the time. I was like, well, if they haven't signed, there's no fight. So right. like, you can say they agreed to this, this, and this, but they haven't fi- signed, there's no fight. Right. And then it was, well, yeah, they're going to agree, but uh, Bud wants his lawyer to look over these things because he's taken no guarantee and he wants uh, transparency from, from PBC and, you know, and I was just like, okay. Hey, somebody, uh, J- Jelani uh, Evering says, uh, Sean, that's BS. Stop front for Bud. This is a duck, and you know it. A lot of people say that's the that's. I know you're not too tied in on social media. That is the 100 percent the sentiment. But why duck? Like, what's the purpose of of? If you don't want to if you don't want to lose the Earl Spence Jr. Like, you don't fight him. Yeah. Kind of easy as that. I don't. I. And I, I, I said it when we had him on the show, and I, was, I don't take either of them as somebody that would duck another fighter, especially one another, because I think there's somewhat of a rivalry. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, that's the duck. If, if you didn't fight him, I don't know. It's frustrating. Philly Zoe said, uh, when Bud told us he's already in the Hall of Fame, he knew what that was it. he yeah, was that's going what it was. to do. Yeah. Salute to him. That, that was a lot of it as well. It was just like... It was just a lot of I'm I'm good either way. Yeah. And that just doesn't give off the impression of I really want to make this fight. Yeah. It's like, yeah, make this fight if the money's right and yeah. the venue's cool and yeah. this, but that's that's just one I can't really wrap my head around is yeah. like ducking something or someone. Yeah, and I think that's just such an easy thing just to label somebody with in boxing. Like if somebody doesn't fight somebody, it could be for a multitude of reasons. And we just say Oh, you didn't fight him. You ducked him. Yeah. So I don't know that that's the case. I don't. I don't. I don't think Terrence Crawford ducked him. No. I just don't think he was as maybe committed to making the fight as he could have been to make the fight. Hmm. Just in my opinion. Yeah, I think at this point you don't. You know, I I did mention. You know, hey, you gotta have a plan B. Blah 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 blah. But yeah, I think maybe even at this point you do. If this is the fight you indeed want, you just you keep you keep rocking I mean, with it and keep rocking with it. You were to the point where obviously again it's it's different. Every situation in boxing is different. But you were to the point where you weren't fighting anyone other than Terrence Crawford. I I you yeah. were literally you were just like that's yeah. it. Yeah. It's either him or nobody. And my dad what? was my you dad him. <laughs> called me. He said you need to make a list. Yeah. And I <laughs> you said hey, Terrence listen, or Bud. This is a true st- <laughs> <laughs> is a true story. My dad asked me for a list for like months he said every time i talk to you about a list you never have a list why he said, dad you already know what i want and he's like sean i've already told you what is possible and what may not happen yeah you need to stop 
but I just was really adamant on, on getting that fight, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I think if you don't, if you don't have financial stress, uh, if things are going for you nutritionally, everything, everything's like going like, yeah, keep pushing it. Yeah. You know? So I don't know, man. Um, go get the bag and then see what happens. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, shine. Uh, at the end of the day, nobody, nobody Please wants don't to see struggle it. with David F. <laughs> Please don't for, for everyone. Yeah. Cause that's, that doesn't look good for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to shine. You got to shine. Yeah. And you know, he's, he does it differently. Of not, course. He's not always like just in yeah. your face an explosion, you know what I mean? But he he's definitely is an exciting fighter. Not every fight is crazy exciting, but you know, he's ha he has to be excited. You get to watch you get to fight at home. So I'm I'm happy for him. BLK? Yeah, BLK Prime, Prime. I think it is. BLK Prime. Uh, I'm I'm not familiar with it. I'm not sure anyone yeah. was familiar with it. But yeah. again, if if the money's there and it and the check clears, I yeah. mean I guess we See got any uh, anything else interesting? Um, let's uh, da, da, da. I'm gonna do this one and then we can move forward. I just, I think it looks I mean, like we don't like really have time to move forward. With oh it. baby, forty two. Uh, Bud just used this whole scenario for clout. <laughs> he knew he had no intentions to fight Arrow, especially after EJ got his act together with the drinking. And then um. Drew uh, C. Dewberry, he said he agreed with Carson. Exactly, Sean. Um, exactly, you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, one more. Uh, Kobe Camp. Sean didn't lose against Terrence Crawford. Yes, his, he father, <laughs> his father. His yeah. father. You want to? Sorry, I, I know we respect the fans here, but yes, he lost. So I <laughs> promise you that. Somebody said B. O. K. Prime is Blue Blood Prime. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's move forward. Oh, there's not. I mean, if there's interesting questions, that's that's kind of. Uh, hey, send them in. Yeah, um, yeah. Feel free. It's my birthday. I I had some videos that I wanted to show. Uh, uh, that we you know we we went out yeah, had a good time for my week. Uh, we, I pulled back this year. We didn't do every single day like like I've been doing for some yeah. for some years now. But um, we were able to do karaoke on Friday, and then we were able to do the Doom Buggies on Saturday. Doom buggies was a good time. It was a it was a funny ass time. I don't have. It was windy out there. It was obscenely windy, and the windy. sand was just moving. Yeah, everywhere. These I'm not guys sure got I've stuck a, in the sand so many times. I'm not sure if I've Vegas. seen a day like that since I've moved to Vegas. I maybe two. Because that was, it was like 35 mile an hour winds. Yeah, so yeah, that was that was crazy. Yeah, karaoke was a good time up at Resorts World. Yeah. Um, do a little back to back Craig David songs. <laughs> me and Renee, me and you on one of them, but. Uh, and that was a good time. Um, yeah, that was a, it. Was a super windy day. World Series. While we wait for questions, is set. Phillies and and uh, Houston. How are you just gonna speed over my birthday like that? Because that was all we did for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got So next week, I'm gonna make sure that the, the videos are up. I got a video of Nestor Gibbs singing, and it was just I was zoomed was I there in. For that? Yeah, 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 you were there. I zoomed in on his face and the dude was just giving it was, was when uh, he sung uh the shy song. Uh, uh, if I ever fall in if love. If I ever fall in love. Yeah, you yeah. still there, right? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. <laughs> man, it was all oh, in. He was, he was all, he was all in. He came in like I ain't singing, I ain't singing. Yeah. I don't remember what song I made him sing with me. Do you remember? No. But uh but I got him to sing that song. I think he loosened up after that song yeah, that he sang with me. But um don't get it twisted. I'm not like vocally like talented. Uh blessed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can't hold a note. Who yeah, and 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 I harmonize relatively well, uh, also. <laughs> so so, but but at the end of the day, man, I love having fun. I just love showing off and showing out and yeah, uh, all that time. kind of stuff. So yeah, it was a good time. Any good any good questions while I, while I stretch talking about the World Series, which I hope the Phillies win in four games, even though they probably won't. Uh no, just a whole bunch of happy birthday wishes. Cavs opened up two and one. Okay. Donovan Mitchell, most points ever in the first three games for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Gail, did he ask, uh, what what did you sing at karaoke? Uh, just a couple of songs that we sang. I, we sang, uh, hey, comment, please, and let us know if y'all know the song <laughs> by, by, by Michael Jackson. Oh, like, my gosh. Liberian, the, the, how, yeah. how? Liberian Girl, that song is so smooth. So, so. My two issues. With so that. smooth and sexy. One, I just don't like the song. I'd never heard it before. Didn't enjoy it. 
<laughs> at all. I couldn't believe you had never heard that song before. And it and it's also a matter of there's so many Michael Jackson songs. So what? Like there's so many great Michael so, Jackson. So what? So I, many songs we could sing. Of we course, could do a whole night of karaoke course. with just Michael Jackson. And so we're sitting there, and and somebody says, I think I think our guy Renee was like, yeah, Michael Jackson. The, he's like Liberian Girl, and I was like, what? Out of all of the songs, <laughs> that's what you land on. And then you sang Human Nature after that. Hell yeah, son. Human, Human Nature, Nature is considerably favorite, better than Liberian my Girl. Favorite Michael Jackson song. That's your favorite. Human my Nature. Favorite. Human Nature. Yeah. Uh, there's an we emotional sang, attachment to it. And we also sang PYT. And we, I was going to say, we sang PYT and I lost my voice trying to sing yeah. PYT. My number one Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror. Okay. we I think we had this conversation yeah. before. A lot of people, Michael Jackson is one where if you ask 20 different people, you're probably going to get a lot of different answers. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Except for the people that are like, oh, beat it. I'm like, yeah. okay, come on. Billie uh, Jean, all right. Live a little bit. Nice and slow. Me and Renee and I, we sing nice yeah. and slow. Every time we do that's, that one, we do that one. Yeah, that's, that's, a staple. that's yeah, that's uh, that one uh, has to and, be. You and I did uh, "Candy" by Cameo. Yeah, the one we usually rock. But oh, yeah. <laughs> any uh, any good questions? They still talking. About... I suppose I could check my phone too. They're, They're still talking, talking about, about Bob. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Because that's all. That's really all it's been. Which is which is frustrating, but also it's like. At least people are interested. Oh, also, perfect timing. Uh, Katie Taylor fights this weekend. She fights uh, Carbo Hall for her all her titles. Oh, yeah. Which is good. Um, Kiko Martinez fights. But, yeah, it'd be good for Katie Taylor to get out, get back out after the big fight, big win against. Let's do, a, let's do a now and then for this question. Uh, C. Drew, Dewberry asked, uh, my favorite fighter. Let's do a now and then and then then. Um, and then one same question for you as well. So what, my, what's the then? The then was you know old school, okay. his, you know whatever. Uh, Marvin Hagler, marvelous yeah. Marvin Hagler is my then, and my now is who is my now? Terrence Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Um, I have to think about my now. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I if I would have one for you off the top right now. I think, I, and I know I, I so, so you're probably not even gonna respect this, and I know because I got so much shit for what I said about boots back in the day. But is it boots? I feel like the most talented boxer in the world, and we don't we don't talk about him. He had no, he hasn't been in the ring in some time, and kind of list goes on. But I mean, it's boots. He tweeted today, new fight date. There you he go. didn't say the date. The, but. The, yeah, I mean, it's. I, I hope he fights on if if Errol ends up fighting Stanionis, I hope yeah. Boots fights in the co main. Yeah. I don't care who he fights. <laughs> it probably would be somebody like Butaev or kind of somebody in that Cody Crawley maybe. Yeah. Kind of right there at the top, whatever. But um I can't think of like my favorite fighter. all time is Roberto Duran. Mm-hmm. And then probably still Lara. Iris Lara. Is Lara. He but he he's obviously getting towards towards the end of his career. So like outside of Lara. Navarrete, probably up there. Yeah. The monster, in a way. I don't have it now because I, I just like so many of the yeah. fighters. He is, he's supposed to fight, in a way, fights in December, I think. He's going to become undisputed yeah. at 118. I don't have it now. Like I, I like, I like a lot of the fighters out there right yeah. now. And I think that boxing is like really, really good like place. In a good, yeah. There's not a ton. We're getting to the point where a lot of the. Older fighters are kind of yeah, kind of fading off. Like, yeah, probably we saw the last of Golovkin in like a big fight. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, <laughs> um, uh, I hope he fights Lara. But um, yeah, there's not like a ton of like older fighters. We're like, okay, like this is yeah. enough. Also, Fury's fighting Chisora, so he re- his retirement lasted quite a long time as I expected it to. That guy just makes me sad. Who Tyson Fury? You said his what? Retirement. He oh, retired for 12 minutes. <laughs> you said it lasted longer than you? you no, thought? I was joking with that guy. Oh, okay, I tell, yeah. Um, that I just, I don't take Fury at his word because he very often says things that don't come to fruition. So he said he was retired. I said, well, if he says he's retired, you got you to gotta kind of take about it. I don't think he'll stay retired. Now he's fighting Chisora in yeah. maybe one of the least interesting trilogies I can think of. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, nobody yeah. was nobody was waiting for that. Yeah, nobody's waiting on that. Um, hey, uh, Massimo 
uh asked uh, sean what do you think of your esbc undisputed slash undisputed did you see they changed the uh, name again? Yeah. <laughs> uh character model i loved it i think that he looked it looks fantastic um they hit everything and, and that game drops in 2050 <laughs> it's gonna be awesome <laughs> to finally play with you they they still don't i don't know man i'm not even gonna speculate yeah you don't that. need to you're you yeah. have you have business ties to the operation I saw, <laughs> <laughs> I saw the way my guy moved and everything the one thing that i did encourage them to do is make the fighters the characters specific to the fighters yeah don't have some fighters do things that they don't, don't do, do and then have other fighters do things that other fighters can't do you know you have to make a way for tennis crawford to switch you know you have to make a way for um for me to be able to kind of move and and pivot they actually have a pivot on the game which i just i'm gonna be if, when I'm, I, if this game ever comes out i'm just gonna be tapping the i pivot, saw bro. the pivot bro yeah. and i was like yo that was amazing that's all i'm gonna be doing yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm just gonna be pivoting around i'm not gonna throw a single punch i don't know how it's done around, but you know that's probably one of those super mario secret unlock the code yeah. type things but yeah it was, the game is cool and you know hey just gotta be patient Someday. yeah you gotta be real patient <laughs> just in this case patient. but what else we got Oh, uh, Duberry said he didn't expect Lara. You're Slandy Lara? Must not watch the podcast. <laughs> but. Uh, she, Sean, you are the one fight. Sean, you are the one fight on his resume that is legit. So was talking about I 100% thought it was going to say, Sean, you are the worst. And I was <laughs> like, interesting strategy to read that one. But okay. This is a question I don't know the answer to. Kobe Camp said, who is the best Ohio fighter of all times? Not including Sean Porter. Aaron Pryor. Uh, then they put Aaron Pryor. They put uh, Adrian Bronner. They put Kelly Pavlik or whoever. I don't I don't know, like, the history of boxing well enough to, to really I, my, say that. But my natural instinct is Pryor. Ad, but Pryor was, yeah. like, on the... Is Ezra Charles from Cincinnati, I think? I don't know. I think Ezra Charles is from Cincinnati. If he know. is. He's up there, but probably yeah. Aaron Pryor. I mean, that's... that's purpose for having to tell here i just not yeah. a boxing historian so go watch his content <laughs> on fight hype and hopefully addresses that i t i called in and spoke with the earlier and he wasn't able to come but he did send some questions in for the guys and, and then he didn't oh. even show up so i thought you were gonna say he sent questions in for us somebody okay. asked about bam rodriguez that's the guy man bam is that dude but bam isn't like my guy though i don't know I, I love Bam. Shout out to Alexandria, Virginia. That's where Troy's from. Okay. There yeah. you go. Uh, what's the name from there, too? Um, Coach K. Karoma? Yeah. Pretty sure he's from Alexandria. Yeah. Also, I, Ant will be back next week, and I won't be here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my bad. Uh, just a minute. Just, just a, and I also feel like, and this was not our intention by any stretch of the imagination, but I was gone for a while, which I'm still gone. <laughs> but then I came back to help. Yeah. And then I was also helping myself because Hafey's out. God love you, Hafey. I invited you today just because the the Olympians were going to be here. Yeah, I was that, like, yeah, I think you'd be cool. You, you'd like to hang out with us. Didn't really do anything for me. And then. But then Ant wasn't going to be able to make it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I can, I can step in for that. But I'm not back. I understand we've been giving you maybe the impression that yeah. I'm back. But I'm not, you can see up there in the graphic. You got Ant, Sean, and Zytel. Yeah. Uh, it's, two of them are solid. Zytel obviously has been missing in action. Um, Zytel has that face like, I'll be, don't he, worry. Yeah, his face is like, I'm back. gone. I'm not even coming back to this. We have any other. I, I also like that you you always say, let's interact with the fans. And it doesn't seem like we're getting a ton of questions. Carson kept it a buck. Well, we have 111 in this chat. That's not bad. So not there's great. that. Not great, but not bad. What else we got? Uh, Kobe Camp said Philly Joe, Sean Porter. Oh, he's probably commenting to somebody. somebody else. Sean doesn't that. want to be a gatekeeper to allow Boots Ennis into the upper elite. I, I mean, I really don't think I was the one that was going to get B Boots has gotten himself into upper elite. It wasn't yeah. going to be me or you know. I don't think I still don't see the Keith Thurman fight happening. I, don't I know see it happening either. they keep like yeah they keep like I just don't see Keith don't see taking that fight, man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see Keith taking that fight either. I don't. I would have figured out some way for you not to be able to fight Boots. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I would, about me. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know how I would have done it, but I would have figured something out. I would have, like, I would have taken PEDs myself and, like, failed the drug test for you or something. But, man, that dude is something else. He's a great fighter. Um, Just 
I, I, I didn't see myself going that long, that far. And, you know, I think one thing that people don't really even really know, and we didn't know, but my dad said, hey, I want you out of this by the time you're 30. You, you, you know, you're not, the body's not meant to take pounding and punishment. Yeah. You've done this long enough. We're going to be safe. We're going to make sure we, we, de- we, we're responsible defensively. We're going to make sure we get you in and out of this, this sport safely. You know, so a lot you of weren't out of my, it by 30. You weren't responsible defensively, <laughs> but you're out of it now. My dad, help. my dad said a lot of things. One, one, something else my dad says, he says, this game uses, uses every fighter up. Yep. I want to make sure it doesn't use you up. Right. You know, so. And now you're, yeah. you're not used up. Yeah. So. Boots it, was. Uh, we we alluded to it on an on an episode before, but there there were two fighters in your entire career that I said, just don't fight them. One was Prime Keith Thurman, the other was Boots Ennis. <laughs> Prime Keith Thurman, people forget. Hey, go back and watch some Prime Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman was that guy. For the people that kind of passed Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman, before Sean fought him, you had just beat you had just beat Devin Alexander, and I was just like, say you know that, what? Say that one right there. That what we got. Right there. I, I don't want to say it wrong. Chiki, Chike. I would assume Chike. Chike. Ugawatu. I definitely messed it up. I apologize. But hey, how important is rest me. for boxers and how often do you rest, Sean? Uh, very important, uh, especially in camp. It is train, eat, rest. Um, you really just have to keep yourself going on that kind of regimen. Uh, anything outside of that. You're putting energy into things you you just don't need to be putting energy into, especially on the elite level. No, these guys coming up, they can afford to come out and do a podcast. They can afford to, you know, go out for a night here or there, especially, yeah. you know, if it's a week or a couple of weeks before a fight. But, man, um, for for the elite, once you the closer you get to that fight, a month out, le- less than a month shut out, you're shutting everything down. Yeah. You, y- y'all know how I got down, so. But the rest is really key because of a of a few things. Your body works while you rest, but your body also um, recovers while you rest. You know, so um, your body is for elite athletes is doing two things. It's like it's still burning, yeah. and you're getting you're 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 able to keep your metabolism going. Um, the other thing too is it is that's when your body is in its true state of recovery. You know, so that's why rest is so important. You'll see b- both guys, Troy and Duke, we were told that they both fell asleep, and that's why they that's weren't a good here. Thing. You know, so, yeah, that's a good thing. When you are getting rest, that means you're working, and then all, obviously all, you're doing what everything you need to, need to do I, to recover. I saw another one that asked if, if I saw the Creed trailer, the Creed 3 trailer. Did you see it? I did not. I saw it. It looks interesting. I think – I can't think of who it was on Twitter said so they, they gave a lot away in the, in the trailer, but I'm sure there will be some plot twists, but – um, Jonathan Majors, who's also, as we just saw in the Ant Ant Man trailer, uh-huh. he's like, I don't want to say it's kind of similar to the Round One film that was kind of that was rumored that you were a part of, but <laughs> Michael B. Jordan is Creed. They both got in trouble. He ended up being the guy that he was supposed to be. Ah, there were some similarities, but uh, so it should be good. Jonathan Majors is a monster. We saying the uh, the Round One script. So you're is Round close One to, movie, yeah, where. You go to jail, or somebody else goes to jail. I don't quite remember the film, but <laughs> and they come back, and and they were supposed to be the guy, and now you're the guy. Yeah, well, it's, it's the main character. Okay, it's supposed to be the guy. Uh, that was the that was the opposite. Mm-hmm, nope, you were it's, the, be the, main it's the main the main guy, the main okay. character. Yeah, it's supposed to be the guy. Yeah, and he goes to jail. Okay, the number two guy that could never be him. So look at it as. As uh, Danny Jacobs goes to jail, <laughs> did I go on to the yeah. Olympic case? And all. So, yeah, so. That's, so Jonathan Majors, they got in trouble when they were younger. Jonathan Majors was supposed to be that dude. Oh, he goes shit. to jail, he gets out, and now he's calling for Michael B. Jordan. Oh, snap. So it'll be interesting. Jonathan Majors is a great actor. Yeah, he's gonna yeah, be yeah, he's yeah. Kang and uh, I like him in the new uh, Ant Man. He's like a great, him. great, great yeah. actor. The, uh, the, um, it would behoove you to know that. Uh, I didn't watch that uh, Ant Man trailer. trailer that Hurtful, just but, me. <laughs> um, there was another question that I saw. Oh, somebody asked, um, "Are there any fights coming up that we're excited about?" I don't know how confident you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confident in Crawford Spence happening. No, Super that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, I know for sure with that I'm going to be in the building December third <laughs> in Arizona. We'll be there to see the legend. <laughs> Not for the for the last time, or I don't, I don't think or, so. That guy, however long he wants to go, it feels like he's just he gonna go. keep going, right? 
the best fighter post Mayweather Pacquiao era, Chocolatito. Sheesh. Who's going to beat Estrada for the third time? And then he got robbed <laughs> the second time. So I, hey, I am extremely. You don't feel like his flame is kind of like. Chocolatito? Dimmed? No, sir. You see, what you, we saw him in person when he did the. Uh, Jesus Martinez, he cooked Oh, 100%, him. but I'm just saying. Excuse me. Excuse me. The flame of him being like super, like he was. I don't. Is he still a superstar? The guy. He's <laughs> the people in your that mind, are, but the like people me, that appreciate good boxing and legends, they appreciate Roma Gonzalez, a legend. What else we got? Boots versus Thurman, winner gets Spence. So Boots versus Spence. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's tough. I love. I, I just mentioned how much I love Keith, but I have a tough time. If you if you say right now Boots in there against Terrence Crawford or Spence, I have a really tough time calling those fights. Hold on, what? I, I was saying, you say Boots versus Errol Spence. If you say like Boots versus Errol and Bud, I have yeah. a tough time. Oh, okay. and I think they're at this point in their careers, uh, yeah. a level above Keith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have a tough time saying Boots loses to either of them for sure. Yeah, uh, that's nautical uh, by nature. Thought you might like that name. Oh no! Um, <laughs> Shout out the trash, uh, most underrated rapper of all time, in my opinion. I I heard, I I listen, had to listen back. I was like, yeah. oh, this person's on to something. Uh, he also said Ortiz versus Staniones. Winner fights Crawford. I don't hate that fight. I th- I actually think I think Stan Jonas against Errol is a, it's an exciting fight. I don't think Errol is gonna be, like, really troubled by it. But it's a good action fight. Good body punchers. But gourmet everything. That's that's Dane. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> and I saw him say, "I'm is back it, next week. I'm not back next week." What is this, what is this? This question? makes sense. It okay. says, "Don't sleep on Keith. He's sharper now." Than he was with the braids. He might be sharper. I think he's a little less dangerous now than without with, that he doesn't have the braids. I don't think he's sharper or more dangerous. Fair enough. Yeah. I'll keep shoot you a text right now, but I hope he does it. <laughs> I love. I love. That's Keith. not saying he's not good. Of course not. And that's not saying he can't beat you. Uh, certain fighters yeah. out there. You, you know? know. You know a fight that I think has been floated a little bit. I would love Thurman Ugas. I think that's a good fight. Thurman versus Ugas. Hmm. Mm. That is a good fight. That's a good fight for both guys, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good fight. You're in a good spot. Guys. It's not a step down for Keith where yeah. Keith's going to feel disrespected. Like, yeah. Throw me in there with the young guys. But, well, Keith, turn on the podcast and I listen love, to Carson Merck. Yeah. I love, I love Keith is one. If, if anyone ever gets a chance to talk to a boxer, make it Keith Thurman because that guy is, he's, he's a conversation. You're saying you're telling the people out there, yeah. That, if you ever if there's just a like, fighter that if you, you ever just like are around <laughs> boxers and you see Keith Thurman, go talk to Keith Thurman because he's a, he's an interesting conversationalist. What else we got? Probably round, probably rounding up about yeah. ten minutes. Yeah, let's round it up in ten minutes. What we got? Anything good? Nothing. Nothing. Really? Nothing? Not not any I mean, questions? Not, not nothing, but yeah, not not very many questions per se. Here, let me. Oh, I'm not even scrolled all the way down. All right, here, bring them in, y'all. Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder, I think, is probably. <sighs> The most interesting fight in the heavyweight division right now. I think so. What says you? Um, I think it's a very exciting fight. That's a fight I would love to see. I think it's super interesting because you you, you can't can't call it. While I, can I call I, for Deontay. I think Deontay <laughs> wins, right? I mean, I, I think Deontay wins yeah. too. But I honestly, I so this is what I said recently. I said that. Um, I I felt like the Anthony Joshua that we got against. Klitschko was the best version of Anthony Joshua we, we've ever seen. Yeah. I also said that I don't think we'll ever see that version of Anthony Joshua again. Okay. And I think that while he may personally look at other fighters in the heavyweight division and feel like he can't beat them, I think that the hype and the confidence in him beating, being able to beat Deontay Wilder would get him up to a place that he hasn't been since Klitschko. Since Klitschko. And I love AJ. I just, I just don't see him beating Deontay. Yeah. I think the most interesting fight in the heavyweight division is Deontay Usyk. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, right behind. I think, I think, I, hmm, because I think that that's such an interesting style matchup. I think that I feel like Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder is an unpredictable match. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're both big punchers. Yeah. 
and that's the fight we've wanted to see for so long. They're probably and of course I've like gotten myself up to yeah. really thinking that also, there's a there's the, a version of the Anthony. Two, they're the two most popular heavyweights. Yeah, like I, I understand people have this like illusion that Tyson Fury is, but he's really not. Like, you don't think? I think Tyson Fury is collectively is yeah. around the world the Third. the most. In, uh, yeah. No, popularity wise. Yeah. I what do you, what do you think? Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, or Deontay Wilder? Anthony? I think Anthony Joshua won. Uh huh. Popularity wise. Yeah, yeah. I think Anthony Joshua won, Deontay two, Fury three. Around the world. Yeah. Hmm. Fury, like, he didn't have, like, this incredible record of, like, selling out fights and... No. I don't know. No. Uh, he also annoys me. So, I, <laughs> there's absolutely... Take that for what it's worth. There's some personal bias there, but... What else we got? What about... uh? What do you think about um Sanchez? Sanchez who? Um, Frank? Frank. I like him. Frank Sanchez. Yeah, you know I like him. Yeah. Any Cuban fighter, just assume that I like them. Oh, yeah. Another Cuban fighter to mention on the uh, Lomachenko undercard, Robesi Ramirez. Oh, yeah. Works with Wade. He's he's really becoming a, a fighter that I'm a fan of. Uh-huh. Um, looked really good in his last fight uh, against Abraham Nova. And I think he's angling. He'll probably get close to a title shot pretty quick. Uh coach Wade says he is the Cuban version of Vasily Lomachenko. He's he he's very skilled, got good footwork. Um coach Wade says I got a Robes Ramirez hat coming to me soon, which I'm excited about. But, <laughs> uh yeah, no, I'm definitely a fan of him. So I'm excited to see him in action. Now, we watching those fights Saturday? No, I might be gone. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So, hit up Ant. Fair enough. Sorry again, the ant's not here. We did this one kind of random, yeah. uh, just trying to fit this in and was making some things work. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, before we go, y'all know that I always try to leave with something positive, something motivational. Um, recently, uh, well, I don't know if you guys have seen, um, we had an ad running with a company by the, by, by the, what do you say, the, by the name of? <laughs> Better Help. Um, Go to this website, betterhelp.com, and this is what I want to leave you guys with. Everybody needs someone to talk to. It's not always going to be a mom or a dad, a brother or a sister, a close friend. Sometimes it has to be an outside source that you feel comfortable with, that you feel confident, that you can tell them things, and they can help you. And this is what I've also said about this. It's good to have somebody to talk to because while you're speaking, you get answers for yourself. While you're speaking, you start to figure out this puzzle that you've been struggling with. You keep everything on the inside. You're not releasing any of it. You don't have anyone to go to. The thoughts that you have are very, very minimal. and You don't have, you can't find the answer. You'll get with a, a, a therapist. You'll get with somebody that, that you can confide in and that you can tell things to. And while you've gone to them for help, you're helping yourself simply by reaching out and speaking. So betterhelp.com is is the uh is the is the company that we were doing some ads with. And I really like the fact that it's an online company. You can get attached to a therapist instantly. You just fill out a quick questionnaire and things like that. And the, another thing that I really like about it is while you're working with a therapist, if that therapist isn't working for you, or if there's something that you don't like, you can move on and find someone else. They're 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 gonna be really um critical i'm sorry in terms of trying to place you with the right person it's not just one and done you know you got one mom you got one dad you only got a few people in your life that you feel like man i can tell you anything and when that's gone you don't know where to go now you have something betterhelp.com check out the website if you're struggling with something if you can't find the answers to something if you need some help beyond what's in your household what beyond close friends and family Go to betterhelp.com and you can get some help there. All that being said, hope you hope you guys enjoyed the live. Uh Ant will be here <laughs> this coming week. Uh well, not sure. I will not now, he, he won't be here. Yeah. Uh you enjoyed my little three week return. I but. should be here. Uh <laughs> God bless you guys. This is the portable.